。在美国政府众多的经济智库中，白宫经济顾问委员会无疑是距离总统决策最近的重量级机构之一。作为依据1946年就业法而成立的官方机构，白宫经济顾问委员会直接对总统和国会参众两院负责，并负责国内经济领域的公共关系。包括现任美联储主席伯南克在内的众多经济学家都曾在其中任职。最近，台新记者采访到了该机构的前主席爱德华·拉希尔。作为前美国总统的经济顾问，拉希尔与美国政府、经济学界、商界都有着密切的联系。下面，我们就一起来听一听他对美联储退出量化宽松这一热点话题的看法。Like I said, the um. You are not on a recovery at all. It's just not worsening. But do you think the、uh, the Fed could really quit, or you know, the the QEs? I think the Fed was quite effective initially,、um, and I think the Fed's policies in 2008 and actually back in 2007, when they got started on some of these things, were good policies, and they were pretty effective.、Um, I think at this point they've ra- they're reaching rapidly diminishing returns. So the ability of the Federal Reserve to really get the economy moving again, I think, is very limited at this point. I don't think they're at a point where buying up those assets is affecting the economy very much, and、um, their failure to buy them up will have very little detrimental effect on the economy. I, I, to be honest, I, I don't quite understand why the market is so upset about this. It's It's not unexpected, and it's. I don't think it's a particularly big deviation from where we are. Do you think right now the the U.S. has a big challenge on、uh, structural unemployment? I don't think that's a major problem.、Uh, that it, it, there is a problem in the sense that we always have structural unemployment. So it's always the case. That if you look back, even in the best of times, even in 2006, 2007, when the unemployment rate was 4.4 percent, which is very low,、mm-hmm. even then we had structural problems. There was a shortage of highly skilled, trained、uh, management talent, of、um, professional talent, of science and technology talent,、uh, healthcare professionals. All of that was missing, even in the best of times. So there's certainly a structural problem, but I do think that that's、uh, the kind of thing that's remedied relatively rapidly as people see these shortages and move into those jobs. So、uh, again, the, you know, you go through these cycles, but they don't tend to last. At least for us, they don't t- tend to last for long periods of time. In history, when the Federal Reserve、uh, raises interest rate or exit from loose monetary policy, we see crisis in Asia, in other places in the world. What about the、uh, the emerging markets right now? What should we be? How should we be prepared for that day? I don't. I actually don't think that、uh, Fed policy is going to have too much of an effect on、uh, certainly on China. I mean, China, it, just as China's policies cannot be blamed for what happens in the United States, I think the United States policies cannot really be blamed for what happens in China. Most of what happens inside a country depends primarily on what that country does. The best example is really if you look at investment in the countries around you, not China per se, but if you look at the other Asian tigers like、uh, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Singapore,、uh, Korea, and you look at how much investment came in from outside, it's a tiny fraction of the total investment in those countries. So. It is true that capital markets, international capital markets, have effects. They're important, but most of those most of those things are determined by domestic issues, not really by international issues. 前不久，美联储主席伯南克再次表示，即使美国失业率下降至百分之六点五的目标水平，美联储也不会急于上调短期利率。受此影响，全球股市普遍上涨，连低迷多日的国际金价也触底反弹。可见，资本市场的嗅觉依然是最灵敏的。曾钦拉齐尔认为，退出 QE 的这个影响啊，对全球经济影响被夸大了。那你觉得是这样吗？那我觉得从他的角度来讲呢，其实肯定是有道理的，因为我们知道拉齐尔他本身是一个劳动经济学的大家，那么他对于货币政策的影响或者说效果，他的判断呢，应当是比较权威的。那么他认为 QE 在初期的效果是比较明显的，但是递减呢也非常快。那么如果 QE 本身对经济的影响就被夸大了的话，那么他退出的时候的。影响呢，有可能也被夸大了。那么这一块，其实我就想到了。
了危机刚刚爆发的时候，其实就有一种论调说全球不平衡，发展中国家和新兴市场的这种储蓄过剩是危机爆发的原因之一。那么这个说法其实就有这个推卸责任的这个嫌疑在里面。那么到了今天这一块也是，如果说一些国家的经济本身受到了这个 QE 的影响非常大的话，那么我想第一个应该考虑的，或者说还应该反思的，应当是自己的经济结构或者经济出现了什么问题，而不能总是归咎于外部的这个条件。Thank、you